You're listening to The Rewind, recorded in the Fayetteville studios of Christian 105.7 WCLN. Today we have a special guest with us. His name is Carlos R. Evans. He's an author, a minister, retired Marine sergeant, husband, father, and so much more. Thank you for joining us to hear this story. Carlos Evans, retired Marine Sergeant, is with us today, and he has got such a fantastic story to tell. Carlos, thank you, first of all, for joining us this morning. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having us. I hate to go back, but I don't feel like we can tell your story of now and of tomorrow without going back a little bit and talking about why we're even having today's conversation. So, first of all, thank you for serving our country. Thank you so much for that. Thank you very much. Can you tell us just a little about what it was that led you to enlist in the Marine Corps in the first place? Well, I have a, I have a family history of my grandfather's uncles that uh, served in the uh, Army and the military that are all veterans. So, as growing up, I saw them as an inspiration and uh, after 9-11, uh, that kind of pushed that inspiration, pushed that fire to, hey, we, I got to do something. So I saw the Marine Corps, a, uh, a platform to serve my country and to share the gospel at the same time. At the time you joined, what year was that? That was in 2004. Okay, 2004. That was the time when patriotism was running high here mm-hmm. in the country, but it was not necessarily the safest time in our country's history to yeah. <laughs> to, be in the to raise your right hand yeah. and say, I yeah. will. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, thank you for that. And you were in Afghanistan how many times? Well, I went to Iraq on three different combat deployments. And then in 2010, I went to Afghanistan. So four combat deployments. In six years. And so while you're in Afghanistan, this is when things began to take a turn. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about what happened in Afghanistan that kind of brings us to where we are today? Well, I was was leading a foot patrol uh, in a mission in Helmand province. It was May 17, 2010. And while we were in a foot patrol, we found some uh, explosives, some IEDs. And on our way going back, I stepped on an IED, and when I stepped on the IED, uh, I heard an explosion, and I immediately lost both of my legs and part of my left arm. So uh, I'm a triple amputee. I have uh, many scars in my body because of that explosion. When I think of Marines, every Marine I know just seems like the most fearless person I've ever met. <laughs> and, and Marines, to me, stand out as the bravest of the brave. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. When you were deploying, were those conflicts the source of fear in any way? You know what? Uh, that's a good question. I, uh, I volunteered to go on this deployment. So, yes, uh, I, I really, I don't want to sound cocky, but I didn't, I didn't feel any fear. Because I I felt and I shared with my wife, you know what, you know nothing's gonna happen to me. You know I'm a, we're Christians. You know nothing 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 bad can happen uh, to us. And that's I I honestly I didn't feel a, any fear. You mentioned right there that you are a Christian. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Um, how do you feel like your faith was tested, or do you feel like your faith was tested following the events on that day? So that that's that's great because sometimes we think that. Because we serve the Lord, because you're a Christian, you know, nothing, nothing negative or something that looks negative uh, can, can happen to you. And I found that, that being a Christian doesn't, doesn't mean that. And the Bible doesn't say that either. You know, we all go through situations and, and difficulties. So my fate was tested that way. You know, how, where am I, where am I going to meet God in this moment in my life, you know? The whys and for what, why God, why me, where are you? And, and I found something, I, f- I found an image of the Lord that I didn't know. Now, one thing about your wife during your rehabilitation, she kind of came in with her own set oh, yes. of qualifications <laughs> yes. from what I'm reading. Yes. My wife, uh, we, we know each other since, since uh, seven years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, seven, yeah, yeah, we grew up together. We grew up together. Uh, we started dating later on. And my wife, is a, she's a nurse as well. She's an ICU nurse. And while I was deployed, uh, and she was taking some classes for uh, trauma uh, and treating uh, amputees. So yeah, the Lord was preparing her for, for all this. 
Isn't it just like yeah. God to yeah. set things, to yeah, set things up that way? I mean, yeah. I'm sorry that it worked out the, the way that it did, yeah. but, but God is so good in, in preparing things. And, and often we get several miles or years down the road and we look back and we see how God yeah. ordained things beforehand. And, and then as we start to relive some of those situations, we realize he was there the whole time. That's right. And how can that how can that shake our trust? How can that shake our faith? Mm-hmm. You know, when when it, in reality it should be shaping our faith to a great extent. That is that is so true. That is so true. So, what did that even look like um, after you came home for your for your wife in taking care of you? And you have s- some children, a couple girls. Yes, we have two little girls, uh, Nairobi and Genesis. They're, How old were they when that happened? Oh, Nairobi was uh, four years old, and Genesis was three months. Oh old. my goodness. So how did it look like? Well, I didn't know what happened to me after I stepped on the explosion, uh, the IED. So uh, seven days after, I woke up in uh, Walter Reed Bethesda Hospital. Uh, I was in an induced coma. And when I woke up uh, from the coma, opened my eyes, and the first person I see in front of me is my wife. And when I saw Rosemary, uh, I, you know, I was crying, but I was grateful to be alive. And I asked her what happened, you know, what what am I doing here? And she was the one who told me, hey, you're missing both of your legs and your, your left hand. When I heard that, I mean, the first thing that came to my mind was, uh, I'm not going to be able to be the husband that I promised my wife I was going to be, mm. or the father that I promised in Nairobi and Genesis I was going to be. So I was grateful to be alive, but those first uh, three years, it was very, very, very hard, very hard uh, dealing with depression, uh, addicted to narcotics. Uh, it was it was hard, very hard. So uh, imagine, you know, a, a spouse, you know, uh, looking at her husband in a situation like that it was it was hard <laughs> you went into the military yeah wanting to be a chaplain yes yes so i'm sure you went in with a different kind of ministry in mm-hmm. mind yes, yes um so how how did that play out after you after you went through the accident and you came out and all of these other things that you never thought you would experience yeah. you're experiencing you don't have some limbs mm-hmm. you're addicted to narcotics what did that look like how were you ministered to and then how did that change your ministry well in the beginning uh i was going through a very difficult situation because i was trying to understand god how could this happen to me you know uh why am i going through this situation I've been doing the right things. Why, why am I going through so much pain? Uh, why am Why am I crying so much? Why Why I don't want to live? Why I was I was suicidal, and through all that, uh, I kept asking because I thought that I thought that the definition of knowing that God was present in my life was that I wasn't going to feel any pain, mm. that I was going to be happy all the time, you know. Uh, so I kept asking myself, you know, why, why, why me? And and the breakthrough was, it was one day I was I was in the uh, apartment uh, room where we were living. We lived two years in Washington D.C., so we were two years in the hospital. And I was ready to give up. And I, I for me, it wasn't fair to my wife to be with me, you know, because here I am with a new body. So and I did not love this new body that I had. You know, sometimes you don't like, oh, I, I gained some weight. <laughs> no, uh, I'm losing hair. Oh, I'm in this situation. So here I am. I'm going to have my limbs. So I didn't like my body. I didn't love my body. So when you don't love yourself, it's very hard to express love to someone else. And I was getting ready to give up. I was getting ready to tell my wife, you know, why don't you just continue with your life because it'll be much better. And I will continue with mine. And my definition of mine was, you know, jumping out of a window. And my wife, she stared at me and she told me, "Uh, what are you saying? When, When the chaplain and the Marines came by the home, came by our house, it was in my mother's house at that time. And knocked on the door, 
when I saw them, you know, what, what every uh, military spouse or thinks when she sees, you know, most soldiers, Marines knocking on that door. The worst happened. When I saw them, I started crying. I got in my knees and I said, Lord, bring him back home alive. And here you are alive right in front of me. I am not a widow and your daughters are not orphans. Mm -hmm. I love you for the man you are today. And I love you for the man you're going to be tomorrow. Man. And that right there, it, it, I couldn't believe it. You know, I, uh, I, I stared at her and I, and I told her, you, you're just saying this because you feel sorry for me, you know. <laughs> and she was like, no. Uh, and, she, and, and I told her, look at all the wounds I have in my body. And she was like, that's the difference between you and me. I don't see any wounds. I only see scars. <sighs> and I was like, I mean, what do you mean by that? She's like, well, her being a nurse... When a patient goes inside a hospital room with wounds, he sees a doctor, right? Right. And the doctor cleans the wounds, and he closes the wounds. And then he goes back home. And as time goes by, there's a scar there. When I see you, I only see your scars because I see who healed your wounds. And who healed your wounds is Jesus. So I go to sleep, and I wake up with a miracle every day. That was a breakthrough in my life. Wow. <laughs> Jeez Louise. When? Did I answer your question? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I lost track of the question uh, and the story of the answer. That was... <laughs> oh, man. Well, the name of your book is Standing Together. It just came out Tuesday of yeah. this week. And that pretty much explains the title right there. Just hearing that story, how not only did she stand by you, but she she. It just lets you know that, that you're still standing in her eyes, too. That's right. Um, that's a beautiful... That's, that's it right there, man. I, <laughs> you know, I'm still going to have to read the whole book. But <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, you'll find much, much more on the book. Fast forwarding a little bit through the recovery, or actually kind of going back to the recovery period, how did that test your marriage? I mean, just talk about a breakthrough moment. Were there times where that recovery period was really a, a test and a strain on your marriage? I mean, I, yeah, even I mean, even when you have a breakthrough, what comes after the breakthrough is hard too. Of, <laughs> so of, it's of, not just great. Of course, it was very hard because uh, I this is a new normal that I'm trying to adapt. It was very hard. I have a new body. I, 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 there are things that I, that I couldn't do on my own. And, you know, everything I did before, I depended on my body, you know. Like, like you said, you know, Marines, you know, uh, uh, working out and being independent and strong. And I felt that my weakest, you know. So, yes, it was hard in our, in our marriage because I was... I was uh, I, I was suffering symptoms of PTSD, and I was trying to, to deal with all this at the same time. You know, how can I be a, a good father? How can I be a, a husband? How can I take care of my family? All this going at, 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 going at the same time. But, man, God's grace. Uh, I've had a lot of support. You know, my local church uh, here in Spring Lake, Capilla Cristo Redentor, uh, the volunteers in the hospital, uh, my friends, my family. It it when, when we when we say standing together, is because a community of people were standing mm -hmm. by our side, twenty four seven. You know, in the in the in the smallest details of life, we had people surrounding us. I I wouldn't be here today, uh, celebrating this moment, without my good friends, without my family, without my church. And many, many volunteers, people that were strangers and today are our best friends. Man, I'm sure you saw the Lord move in incredible ways in, mm -hmm. in over the last few years, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, when did you or did you feel like God was when did you feel like God was leading you into full time ministry? Because that's what you're doing now. Yeah. 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 So what did that even look like? Well, it, it, <laughs> before I joined the Marine Corps, I was I was doing ministry. And now I'm in the Marine Corps, and it's it's different. And I used to tell my wife, I'm like, I wish, I wish I had time, you know, <laughs> to to 
to share the gospel and, and, and to be in full-time ministry. But, you know, we're working and, you know, doing life and all this stuff. And, and now I'm medically retired <laughs> <laughs> from the Marine Corps. So now I have time. And what happened was that as, as we were in the hospital and, uh, and Walter Reed Bethesda with other wounded service members, uh, people missing limbs and all kinds of injuries, uh, we started started uh, sharing our story. You know, people would ask us, hey, uh, so what happened, this and that? And we were invited to many places, to the Capitol, to the White House, uh, everywhere, State of the Union address, everywhere. And people would ask us, and we started just sharing our story. And as we're speaking to families and friends and people that I saw on TV, uh, started crying. And they'll say, you guys, you guys have something different. And we will tell them, you know, fate, family, uh, friends. And doors started to open. Uh, started traveling to South Korea, uh, South America, Europe, uh, the Caribbean, just sharing a story just mouth to mouth. <laughs> and it started I didn't even. It just started. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> look for it. it then it just it just started. And uh, my pastor at the time uh, in our church, uh, he believed in our ministry, and and gave us that that platform to to share to share with others. And and the Lord just put different people in our lives, and and here we are today. <laughs> Presenting, standing together. <laughs> so, now, yeah. how did how did this lead to you writing a book? And you you told us earlier before we got on the air, it took you and your wife three ish, maybe more years, yeah, to write this sucker. Yeah. Um. So how? <laughs> I, I mean, I like that's that. a long time. <laughs> How did you get, even get to that point? Was it just did it come out of you sharing your story around the world? Well, uh, we got a word. We got a word that this was going to happen, <laughs> that what we're living today was going to happen. And sometimes, you know, you're like, oh, how? Yeah, okay, yeah, how? How is this going to happen? You know, really? Yeah, write a book, you know, really? But people started, you know, getting uh, talking to us and sharing to us, I think, I think you should do this. I think you should do this. You should write a book, you and your wife. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but how? You know, yeah. How are we gonna get a book uh, published? <laughs> so I have a, I have a, a family member uh, who got in touch with, uh, with someone, and that person called me, and I called uh, Cecil Murphy, and we got together, and we started recording, recording, and writing, and recording, and writing, recording, and writing. And Cecil Murphy is a New York Times bestseller. <laughs> And I couldn't even believe that this was happening <laughs> and that he he agreed to, you know, help us get all this together. And we just started writing and, and tears and laughter. And and as we're going back to experiences that we have lived, it was it, it was a beautiful moment uh, for me and Rosemary. So, yeah, all these people got together. See, so me, my wife, uh, our publishing company and try to edit in and. Three years later, <laughs> here you are. Yeah, uh, h- here we are. So it's 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 been a journey of of experiences that and people that have been in a life uh, that are right here today. Mm-hmm. Was it hard? I mean, I know it was long. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like that would be hard to be so vulnerable as to put everything that you've just experienced in the last however many years down on paper for anybody and everybody to read like all the ugly all the uh, everything that would be hard was it an easy write or was it no just <laughs> no. No. Great answer. No, it wasn't uh-uh. if, if i say right now that it was easy i'll go back home i'll have problems with rosemary <laughs> no it, it it wasn't easy because here we're going back to experiences that we thought that we already, you know, overcome. So going back to, you know, places in our lives where we cried a lot, you know, where we saw a lot of suffering, you know, you know, we had to go back to, yeah, when I stepped on that IED. Uh, going back to 
those tears, you know, revisiting, you know, those those spaces in our life that we thought, oh, everything was good. And yes, opening our hearts, our weakness, because who wants to express their weakness? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, nobody. Everybody wants to talk about, oh, my pride, my pride moments. And opening our hearts, because I think people need to, people, you, we need to be real, you know, and, and, and we, need, we need people to see, you know, our, our, our weakness. So, yeah, we express everything right here. And what we saw is, you know, you know, the Lord, he takes a mess and makes it, you know, a, a, a platform of hope. You know, he takes our tears and, and converts them to laughter and joy. So that's what happened. Yes, while, while we're writing, yeah, a lot of tears, but at the same time, a lot of joy. Because we could go back and say, wow, the Lord was present in the past. And he's going to be present today and tomorrow. So, yeah. This is a book I think we're going to need to read. <laughs> well, you know, well, Carlos, as you had to journey back through all of that to write the book and to walk through that once again, um, whatever made it onto the page, what is it that you hope people will take away from bo- the book after they read it or as they read it even? <laughs> well, what I want people to to take away is that, you know, Today, uh, today I have one hand, right? As you can see, and today I don't have any legs. But today, we're touching more people with one hand than when we had two hands. Today I don't have legs, but today we're leaving more footprints and more lives than when we had feet. Because all you need to touch someone is a heart and faith. And I learned through this experience, and I'm learning, that when you touch someone with your heart, (laughs) that's the most effective touch and print that you can leave in someone's life. So what I want people to take away from this at the same time is that you're always going to need someone to stand by you to leave a print in someone's life. I want to leave, uh, I I, want to leave a message that, to be grateful, you know, to touch someone in your community, to touch someone in your home, to touch someone in whatever platform the Lord puts you, and that's that's what we're, that's what that's part of what we're sharing. Uh, whatever looks like a obstacle in your life today, it could be your promotion tomorrow. You know, obstacles are platforms, and today uh, my pain in the past is my platform today. So yeah, sometimes we we experience things in life that that look like the hardest, that look like uh, things that you're never gonna be able to overcome. But now I go back to May 17, 2010, the day that I stepped on that IED, that I thought it was gonna be the worst day of my life, and I celebrated. It's my alive day because it has become the best day of my life because it has brought me to you and the audience that is listening. Uh, to this uh, today, so no, no regrets, and great sentiments. And again, we're talking like with Brian. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> we're, Stop! We're, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I mean, to say that that's the best day of your life, like that is only the Lord. Well, once again, Goodness. we've been talking with Carlos R. Evans today, and this is the conversation we hope you'll share. You'll be able to find it on our podcast channel beginning this evening, and find us on Facebook. Just go to Christian 105.7 on Facebook, and there's a, a live conversation. You'll be able to uh, meet Carlos, at least digitally, and uh, we certainly hope that you will pick up a copy of the book, Standing Together. Matter of yeah. fact, while you're there, get three, give two of them to friends, oh. and read one, because you're going to want to keep yours. You're not going to want to yeah. <laughs> Don't I'm not going to give yours away. Yeah. I can I can guarantee you. Um, now, the name of your ministry is Touching Lives, Leaving Footprints. Tell people how they can get in touch with you and your ministry. Oh, they can get in touch with us uh, through our website, crevans.org, uh, social media, CR Evans, uh, Instagram, CR Evans. And, <laughs> CR Evans, Google yeah, it, you'll yeah, find everything. Exactly, yeah, CR <laughs> Evans. Yeah, touching Life, Leaving Footprints. That's and by the way, if you'd like to meet Carlos, he'll be at Rivers of Living Water Church of God. It's on Bingham Drive in Fayetteville. Easy to find. Lots of parking, and they have room for you. Um, he'll be presenting his book and mm. have a few words, and you'll have an opportunity to get your book signed if you make it out there. What time does that service begin? 
1045. 1045, Rivers of Living Water Church, 1764 Bingham Drive in Fayetteville. Hopefully you can make it. We'll post all that information on Facebook as well. Thanks for coming in today, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you very much.